Hello, welcome back. It is now day five and not only are you seeing a different angle of my sofa, I am also inexplicably sitting like Mariah Carey. So I hope you're all enjoying that. Um, we are going to be discussing the fifth piece of guidance in the Mental Health Media Charter today. Now again, this has come from the research that we've done talking to people who are currently living with mental illness. Something that came out really strongly from our research actually conversing with and communicating with people who are living this day in, day out, was how damaging it is when the press routinely make connections between mental illness and violent crime and terrorism. What appears to have happened in recent months and years in the press is perhaps instead of drawing attention to a terrorist religious persuasion, which is arguably a good thing, not suggesting for one moment that we should tar everybody within a religion with the brush of a very tiny minority who might commit terrorist atrocities. That was not a good thing either. But it appears to have been replaced with the terrorist had mental health problems. And there seems to be an erroneous understanding within the press that that's somehow better. The reason that it's not is that 99% of people who have mental illnesses are far more likely to harm themselves than they are to harm anyone else. So it leads to a, a, a misunderstanding about people with mental illnesses and their behaviour and how dangerous they are to society. Part of the problem here, of course, is that the term mental health covers such a broad remit. You know, think about it. If I said to you, I've got a physical health problem. It'd be absolutely ludicrous for me to expect you to understand what I meant by that. It could be any number of physical conditions. And in just the same way, mental health issue doesn't really tell you anything about what that person has. So we are asking the press to do this. First of all, to check that the violent criminal or terrorist has a diagnosis of a mental illness that they can verify with their doctor and to explicitly state what mental illness it is that they have. We also want them to stress that any kind of mental illness that the terrorist or violent criminal was living with had to happen in conjunction with other factors to drive them to the point where they would engage in that kind of behaviour. So with terrorism, you need radicalisation, you need desperation. There are lots of other factors at play. And if possible, we are asking the press to also include a disclaimer within the article or within the television programme stating that the vast majority of people with mental illnesses are not harmful. It's very important that the public understand this because despite all the awareness raising that's happened over the past couple of years, there is still this idea that exists that people with mental illnesses are dangerous. And that means that they can be, in some cases, isolated and excluded. All the things that you don't need. What you need when you have a mental illness is connection and communication. So that's today's piece of guidance. I'll be back tomorrow with piece of guidance number six. And tomorrow we're going to start talking about what the press and media should do rather than what they shouldn't. So I will see you tomorrow for that and enjoy your Thursday evening.